Can you tell which eye received major invasive surgery about 10 weeks ago? I'll reveal the answer in a few minutes. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I decided to put this video about my eye surgery on this channel, even though it might make more sense to put it on the Ageless Adept channel. But all of the, the surgery, the options, the advice that I'll give, the prices, the total cost, the logistics, all of that took place here in Southeast Asia. So I figured it might be of help to anyone living in this region who has to make those choices here. So, and I also want to um, grow this channel a little bit more since I think it has a little bit more appeal. So that's another reason why I've put it here. So no, I, I discovered in early January, it's now June, I discovered in early January that I had a detached retina. And the uh, way I discovered that, it was for at least another year prior, my peripheral vision had been blocked. And because of my fascination and obsession with parasites, I thought it might be related to toxicity in the system or might even be, you know, worms inside the eye. So, and sometimes it... uh was more pronounced than others. Sometimes it actually seemed to disappear. So uh, my peripheral vision, vision out of the side of my eye, was um, blocked. And that's how I uh, unknowingly, that was the first sign that I had uh, a detached retina. But I didn't learn about it until I was driving by the Heart Eye Clinic, H-A-R-D-T, Heart Eye Clinic on Saipan. And I just on a whim decided to go inside and ask if they had a way to actually look inside the eye to determine if there was any foreign substance, any organisms inside the eye that could be causing the blockage. And I ran into a fellow, or one of the staff members, a fellow named Amor, who said, yes, indeed they do. And uh, the price was right, and he said they were free that day, so I actually went back the very same day and got a fundus photograph um, taken of the eye and it to show you know what was going on. So when I got the consultation with the doctor, uh, I discovered that I had a, a detached retina on my left eye. So this is the eye that we're focusing on uh, for the rest of the video. To explain what is what has happened, this is the back of the eye. This is the retina on the inside of the eye. And I'll show a diagram as well. So typically the back of the eye would be here, the retina would be here, but I'm going to uh, I'll turn it this way. So the retina is usually affixed and attached to the back of the eye. And that's where the light from the, the lens comes in and it's processed by the retina, and then the uh, neurons are sent to the brain for processing. But you can think of the retina as basically the screen of the eye. That's where the, the images get processed. So what happens is, and in my case, the retina started to detach from the back of the eye, all right? And the concern was, as the doctors explained to me. And let me just say that uh, I'd like to really acknowledge how patient and understanding the doctors at Heart uh, Eye Clinic were. They answered all of my questions, you know, from the ridiculous you know, to the technical and very patient, very uh, professional and very kind and empath um, um, empathetic in all of their responses. So the concern was typically the Detached retina does not heal itself uh, in most cases. I'm sure there are rare occurrences where it happens. So the concern was if the retina continues to detach and it passes a critical point, the macula, the center, center of the eye, at that point, you lose all vision and it's uh, virtually impossible to reattach and to restore vision at that point. So that was the concern that the doctors had, that if I waited too long, to intervene that I could lose vision. So I came back uh, about a week later and they assessed if there was any progression in the detachment and fortunately there was not, but that danger still existed. As was pointed out to me by the doctors, the saving grace was there seemed to be a single nerve inside the eye 
that was preventing the retina from detaching further. So that's why for the past year or so before, you know, it, it, did, it hadn't gotten any worse. But that could change, and at any point, the retina could detach further and uh, pass the macula, the center of the eye, and my vision could be um, permanently uh, lost. So here are my options. So the option is a vitrectomy, and the vitrectomy is designed to go inside the eye and push the retina back in place and then find some way to maintain continuous pressure on the retina to keep it in place while it heals. So basically what happens is they go inside the eye, there are two uh, points of entry inside the eye, and one is to provide a light source and the other is to do the actual uh, manipulation of the retina and the uh, suture. So after that is done, then there is a, a gas or an oil inserted inside the eye that maintains a certain pressure inside the eye to keep the retina uh, affixed to the uh, back of the eye, in my case, so that the uh, healing can take place. And that can take um, a certain number of weeks, certain number of months. So the two options available for that pressure are either an oil or a gas. And here are the options as they were presented to me and what I ultimately decided. So if I go with the oil option, if they insert an oil, then I can leave shortly after the surgery and fly back to Sa Saipan. And uh, if I'm doing the surgery, for example, either on Guam or in Manila, those are my two options. And I can resume life as normal. And then about six months later, I have to return to get the oil removed. That's one option. The other option is if I use the gas, uh, C3F8 gas, then the gas takes about eight weeks to finally uh, dissipate. Um, and during that eight weeks, I have to remain in a certain position because if I, uh, I can't walk around as normal, I have to remain um, with face down so that the gas um, pushes up on the, on the back of the eye. So, um, and, the, oh, and the major disadvantage in most people's cases is that I cannot fly for that eight weeks while the eye is healing, while the, while I'm maintaining that um, prone position for eight weeks, I can't fly because if I fly up to 30,000 feet in a plane, the gas will tend to expand and that can put an inordinate amount of pressure on the inside of the eye and, and damage the optic nerve. So if I do the oil option, the oil tends to leave a residue could be absorbed by the system. And as you guys might know, I'm a health fanatic. So, you know, I do my best to stay away from uh, putting foreign substances in the body as much as possible. Uh, in certain cases, obviously, it's unavoidable. But if I can reduce the, if I can mitigate the risk for long term ex or um, uh, internal exposure to certain chemicals, then that's usually the option that I'll take. So I didn't want to do the oil. Because I also read on online that when they six months later when they remove the oil, there's still a chance that they may not get all the oil uh, out, and some could remain in the body. So I didn't want that uh, uh, residual oil to contaminate my system. So I definitely wanted to do the the uh, gas option. Now my choice. Um, as far as where to do the operation. If I do the operation on Guam, it's going to be more expensive. If I do the operation in Manila, it's going to be less expensive. So that's one point for Manila. So fortunately, and this is a major uh, factor in my case, is that I had a f have a friend who had a has a condo in Manila. So I was fortunate and I'm fortunate enough to be staying here um whereas on if if I had chosen to do the option of Guam, I wouldn't have had a place I'd have to stay at a hotel since I you know don't have any friends who I could stay with indefinitely. So this is an empty condo in 
Manila. I'm basically here by myself, so I have, you know, that option to stay. Thanks to my good friend, uh, who whose generosity, you know, has saved me a lot of uh, money to to uh, pay for accommodations. So that for me was a no-brainer. Um, I have the flexibility since I work for myself, so I can extend as much as I need to. The eight weeks was not an issue. I didn't want the oil. I had the the accommodation option, and so I chose Manila. And ultimately, I chose uh, at the recommendation of Heart Eye Clinic, St. Luke's Hospital. So that's where that's how I made my choice. Now, obviously, if you have the funds and you have the means, if you have the accommodations, then Guam might be a good choice for you. Let's say if you're in this area. Um, for me, that wasn't an option. If you need to get back to work or get back to some semblance of what you consider a normal life, then perhaps the oil might be an option for you if you know you want to be able to fly and leave. But for me, those were the reasons that I chose the the gas option. Now, I had the operation, and according to what I was prepared for, as I mentioned, it would take eight weeks for the gas to fully dissipate. And while the gas is dissipating, you can actually see a level. Uh, when you look out the eye, when I look out the left eye, I can actually see from day to day the level, you know, between the gas here and the uh, regular vision uh, occurring, you know, above. Then eventually it dissipates, it dissipates. In my case, it took exactly eight weeks and three days. So on March, uh, Let's see, start of March, May 24th is exactly when that last little residual drop of gas disapp disappeared. And I remember that because I was doing a live stream from on the roof in here in Manila. And in the morning, the drop was there. And by the time an hour later, when I did the live stream, when I came back, the drop was gone. So it took, as predicted, eight weeks and three days for the gas to dissipate. And at that point, I in theory, was free to get the final okay from the doctor to leave. Now, during the recuperation, as mentioned, I had to keep my head down while, you, you know, to keep the pressure up on the back, on the back of the eye. So I spent that <laughs> full eight weeks as much as possible, didn't go outside um, very often, and I would lie down on the, on the bed, put my laptop on the floor so that I could still do work, um, but my head would be, you know, facing down. And I did that for eight weeks straight, going out only for an hour, perhaps to the supermarket to uh, buy food and then come back and, you know, come do that for eight weeks. Um, so that's, and during that time, I was taking drops, many different types of drops. At one point, eye drops. At one point, I was taking seven different types. One for to guard against bacterial infection. One uh, as a steroid. Uh, one for another one for eye pressure. Um, so another one to keep the eye moist because there's a tendency for, for dry eyes. So a lot of different drops every few hours for the, for the entire period. Now, in my case, and this is something that you might want to consider as you make your decision. It's not something that the doctors may talk about, but it's something that uh, depending on how long your retina might have been detached is something that could present itself as it did in my case. Even though the gas bubble had disappeared, even though the retina healed um, sufficiently, there was a complication. And the complication was that typically the liquid in the eye, the aqueous humor, it's called, uh, drains out of the eye through um, uh, passageways uh, in front of the eye. And in my case, because the retina had detached, the fluid in the eye was draining through an alternate pathway. All right, so it wasn't draining through the normal pathways. And because it wasn't draining through the normal pathways, those normal pathways, uh, 
atrophied over time. So they got, because of lack of use, they sort of clogged up and they were no longer um, uh, functioning. So once the retina was pushed back in place, the fluid is now filling the eye. I started to experience high eye pressure because the fluid was not draining. So the doctors noticed that upon subsequent visits and they noticed that the pressure was exceedingly high. My eye pressure was as high as 28, as high as 33, and it should be somewhere between 12 and 20. So my right eye, the eye that uh, uh, had not been um, subjected to the surgery and did not have a detached retina. That was anywhere from 14, 15, 12, 14, you know, somewhere in that range. But the left eye was now going 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30. So that the pressure was increasing. And the danger of the increased eye pressure is that it can ultimately affect the uh, or damage the um, optic nerve. So I took, I was given more drops to uh, lower the, the pressure. But another surgical procedure was uh, suggested, and this was uh, SLT, Selective Laser Trabeculoplasty. Um, you can look that up if you, if you like to learn more about it. But essentially, it involves just shooting uh, bit, um, zaps of laser at the a, a normal drainage pathways to stimulate them to uh, restart the flow in its normal um, mode. And hopefully that works. But because mine, my pathways had been inactive for so long, the doctor didn't have much hope that it would because the, the, uh, the blockage was so deep that the, uh, 97 zaps of uh, the SLT laser that they did uh, weren't effective enough to clear the entire uh, drainage system. I've done the vitrectomy, and the vitrectomy essentially went fairly well, um, so the retina is back in place. However, the uh, drainage now needs to be addressed. So I'm a uh, I did the SLT and that did not take care of it. So now I'm scheduled for another operation that, uh, much to my chagrin, is going to involve placing an implant in the eye to introduce an alternate uh, channel for drainage, and that should lower the pressure. And after that one, I will um, give you an update and see how that goes. In an upcoming video, I'll focus more on the logistics, on the travel, on the visas, medical visas, and then uh, perhaps in another vi uh, video, I'll focus on my actual stay at St. Luke's and some of my suggestions if that's uh, someplace you might actually be, be staying as well. Hope that's helpful for uh, someone, and I'll talk to you in the next video. I can see clearly now the rain is gone